2019 has come to an end. We wish all the viewers a very happy upcoming New Year 2020. In this year, we've published 242 videos and tried to provide as much information and analysis as we could. Rest assured, we'll continue to do the same going forward. We have a lot of support from you and we're very thankful for this. This is the last video of this year and hence it's apt that we focus on things that could be important in the coming days. In this video, Defense Updates lists five weapons technologies that will shape the future of warfare from 2020 onwards. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. Space is a new domain, and there are many possibilities including having weapons that can hit Earth from space. But in the immediate future, space warfare is most likely to revolve around satellites. Satellites are one of the most important assets for a nation. They play a vital role in civilian and military communications. Military satellites are used for gathering intelligence as well, as they can monitor and provide early warning against missile launches by a rival nation. Military satellites also provide guidance to missiles, aircraft and warships to name a few. So if an adversary can somehow knock off the satellites then it can handicap the military. At present, the main space warfare capability is the ability to disable or destroy an adversary's satellites from the ground using ASAT or anti-satellite weapons. The US carried out its first ASAT test in 1959. The anti-satellite weapon had a range of 1,100 miles or 1,770 kilometers. A mock test was carried out in which a dummy attack on the Explorer 6, which was an altitude of 156 miles or 251 kilometers, was successfully executed. The Soviet Union, after conducting a series of seven tests from 1963 to 1971, declared its system operational in 1973. In January 2007, China successfully destroyed a defunct Chinese weather satellite. On the 27th of March 2019, India successfully knocked out a satellite. So as of now, this kind of tech is available to these four countries. Another aspect of space warfare is using a satellite to destroy another satellite. But this type of capability is still immature. It's interesting to note that the US Space Force was signed into law on December 20th, 2019 as part of the 2020 National Defense Authorization Act. Modern militaries around the world depend on computers and networks. Cyber warfare involves the actions by a nation-state or international organization to attack and attempt to damage another nation's computers or information networks. This could be done in multiple ways, like injecting computer viruses or triggering DDoS or distributed denial-of-service attacks. Cyber warfare, at least in limited form, is already in use now. In August of 2012, the Saudi Arabian firm Saudi Aramco, one of the world's largest oil producers, was hit by a piece of malware known as Shamoon that deleted data from 35,000 of the company's computers. This attack, allegedly triggered by Iran, paralyzed the operations of the company. Iranian hackers even hit almost all major US banks, making their websites unresponsive with sustained DDoS attacks. In 2015, Russian hackers carried out an unprecedented act of sabotage, which gives us an idea of what cyber warfare can do. They attacked three Ukrainian regional energy utilities, and this resulted in loss of electricity for about 225,000 civilians. 
in the future it will be one of the most important domains of the military as this brings in asymmetric capabilities for example suppose a military base is near a dam and the dam's computers are taken over and the water is released to flood the base The technology of swarming is in which drones are deployed in squadrons, able to think independently and operate as a pack using artificial intelligence. This kind of capability will be disruptive as it will be hard to defend against. For example, even the most potent air defense will find it hard to track a single drone from a huge number of potential targets and will also run out of ammunition. This technology is in its infancy. But militaries around the world are putting in a lot of resources on this. A relatively simple form of this has already been used. In January 2018, Russian forces faced a drone swarm launched against Khamenei Air Base in Syria. The Russians were able to neutralize most of these, though the attack was not able to inflict major damage. It's indicated that the threat of the drone swarm has arrived. A recent example is the attack on Saudi Arabia. On September 14th, facilities of Saudi Arabia's oil company Aramco, located in the east of the country, came under attack. As per reports, 18 drones and 7 missiles were used for the coordinated attack. The damage was significant and this caused a spike in global oil prices. Lasers are concentrated beams of light that transmit large amounts of electromagnetic radiation against their targets. The power of a laser is generally stated in kilowatts. The general idea of laser beam weaponry is to hit a target with a train of brief pulses of light. The rapid evaporation and expansion on the surface cause shock waves that damage the target. When a laser beam strikes a target, it can cause the external surface to heat up rapidly. This can cause a drone to burst in the sky and its battery pack or fuel tank to ignite. Even if this doesn't happen, the laser could fry the electric sensors and communication modules of the drones, which will make them lose contact with its operator and deplete its ability to navigate, ultimately disabling them. Lasers have some very important advantages. The speed of light enables them to hit their targets almost instantaneously. Laser weapons also don't need to carry ammunition like the traditional systems and hence they'll be able to take out a much larger number of threats constrained only by the power supply limit of the platform. They're also so much cheaper and could cost as little as $1 per shot. This is much more cost effective than deploying traditional weapons. The US is in the lead and is deploying several lasers of different types. An object is said to be hypersonic once they exceed speeds of Mach 5. That's five times the speed of sound. This is about 1,715 meters per second, or 3,836 miles per hour, or 6,174 kilometers per hour. There are currently three methods being applied to make hypersonic weapons. The first is using hypersonic glide vehicle, HGV. In this method, the system is launched to extremely high altitudes using ballistic missile or an aircraft, where it skips across the Earth's upper atmosphere. The vehicle then separates from the carrier and glides back to the Earth towards its intended target, attaining hypersonic speed. The second is using a scramjet engine. The scramjet is an innovation on the ramjet. Ramjet engine can power flight to supersonic speeds, but scramjet can enable the missiles to reach hypersonic speeds. These engines have no moving parts, like the compressors and turbines used in the turbofan engines found on conventional jet planes. They rely on huge pressures created by fast airflow into the engine to ignite the fuel and generate thrust. In this method, a rocket booster is used to accelerate the missile to hypersonic speed. Then the scramjet engine kicks in and enables the missile to fly at sustained hypersonic speed. The third is through the use of air-launched ballistic missiles ALBM. As the name suggests, this kind of missile is ballistic in nature but is launched from air, unlike traditional ballistic missiles which are launched from land or sea-based platforms. 
It must be noted that traditional ballistic missiles like American Minuteman 3, Russian Satan or Indian Agni ballistic missile all travel at hypersonic speeds, but they follow a predictable ballistic trajectory and can't maneuver mid-course. Current air defense will fail to intercept these weapons because of their capability to maneuver at such high speeds. Russia is at the forefront of this hypersonic technology and has reportedly deployed the Avangard, which is an HGV, and Kinzhal, which is an ALBM. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.